The flat face and giant eerie eyes of owls are so striking they have earned a place in the folklore of many different cultures. They owe these unique features to adapting to become one of the only large nocturnal birds of prey. Their flat disc-like faces actually improves their hearing, and they have had to evolve to fly more silently than most other birds. But they also had to specialise and involve features that come at a cost in other areas. For instance, owls don't really have eyeballs anymore. In order to gather as much light as possible out of their pitch black habitats, their eyes didn't just grow larger, but actually elongated into tubes. They have now been adapted into this shape to such an extent that owls can't rotate their eyes anymore and have to move their head to look around. But to make up for this, they are able to rotate their necks twice as much as a human. So owls are highly specialised to live in their dark ecosystems. However, in the not too distant past, they were a lot less specialised, with many of their ancestors eating very different prey and even hunting during the day. And some other owls were specialised to a completely different way of life, some even evolving to lose their wings and become flightless birds. The oldest owl fossil is incredibly old, dating all the way back to around 61 million years ago, showing that owls have been around since right after the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, and this makes them one of the oldest birds of prey. The earliest owl that was known from a near-complete specimen was called Promontinx poliotaurus, which means first owl. The specimen had the majority of its bones preserved, only the fossil was missing a head. Like the other owl fossil, it was discovered in North America, meaning this is where owls may have originated. Specifically, it lived in what is modern day Wyoming, about 55 million years ago. At this time, there was a large jungle that stretched way up into where modern day America would be. Very few recognisable animals had taken form at this time, and instead their very strange ancestors like tiny horses, deers and camels, not much larger than rabbits, would have inhabited these jungles. Although the owl was missing a head, its body can teach us many things about the animal. It was almost certainly a predator as it had large sharp claws and was also very big, being around about the same size as a snowy owl, which are among the largest species of owl alive today, which shows that owls had already adapted large bodies at this point. However, the most interesting thing about the fossil was that the digits on its talons were a different size and shape to modern owls. The toes of modern owls are all about the same size, but Premoptinx had an enlarged first and second toe, which means its toes were more similar to the talons of hawks and eagles. Modern owls eat many different foods, most species hunting rodents like mice, but some species hunt small lizards and even insects. However, nearly all owls eat fairly small prey and use their talons to hold their prey in place but will use their beak to actually make the kill. However, the fossil of Premomptinx suggests that it hunted more like hawks and eagles, by targeting larger prey and by piercing their bodies in a lethal death grip with its feet. The impressive feet of this ancient owl were most likely suited to hunt animals around the size of a rabbit, one of the most common prey of eagles and hawks. However, although rabbits are one of the most common animals alive today, this was not the case 55 million years ago, and no rabbit fossils are known from North America at this time. The rabbit sized animals from the time that this giant owl may have eaten would have been animals like deer, that were much smaller back then, and also ancient primates that were actually known from America around this time. Birds of prey are not a singular family or group of birds, and are a collection of birds, sometimes even fairly distantly related, that have evolved similar features as they have all adapted to become predatory animals, like larger talons and a sharp overhanging beak. Hawks, eagles, and kites are most closely related to vultures, whereas falcons are much more closely related to birds like parrots than they are to eagles or hawks. The owl group are known as strigiforms, and are most closely related to the bird group that contains woodpeckers, kingfishers, and mouse birds. The eagle and hawk family are known as the accipitrids, and their oldest fossils are from around 50 to 40 million years ago in the early Eocene epoch, much later than the first owls. So it may be that some owls, like Primoptinx, may have filled their niche of hunting larger prey before they evolved. Because Primoptinx was missing a head, it is difficult to know if they were day-dwelling or nocturnal, like most modern owls. A fossil of another ancient owl from around the same period, about 48 million years ago, also found in America, has a really well-preserved skull. And above its eye sockets, it has small bony ridges. 
These are virtually non-existent in modern owls, but are possessed by many other species of prey like eagles and falcons, and a few species of day-dwelling owl like the northern hawk owl. These small bony ridges above the eyes are thought to shade the eye from sunlight, and this ancient owl had them as well, meaning it too may have hunted during the day. A handful of modern owl species are actually most active during the day, but out of the small amount of ancient owl fossils available from this time, one of them being active during the day shows that owls may have gone through a period of being very prevalent daytime aerial predators, but for the most part only the nocturnal owls survived into the present. This isn't entirely surprising, as the vast majority of birds come out during daylight hours, and so at some point the owls must have had a change in their evolution to become nocturnal. All of the prehistoric owls mentioned so far were from long extinct ancient owl families that no longer exist, but by the end of the Oligocene about 20 million years ago, the modern owl families had mostly taken shape, and by this time the vast majority of them were nocturnal, like they are today. For instance, there was an owl that was known from Italy called Tito Gigantia, that was actually one of the earliest members of the barn owl family, but it was twice the size of a common barn owl. Modern owls all come from two families, the true owls, or the strigidae, and the barn owls, or the titonidae. Today, the vast majority of owls are true owls, but in the Miocene period, barn owls were the more dominant animals. Barn owls were often much larger around this time as well, as there are several monstrous Miocene owls known from various Caribbean islands. The largest being Titopollens, that lived in the Bahamas and was most likely larger than any living owl, being the same size as a large eagle. The Bahamas was very different at the time this massive bird lived, as sea levels were lower and so the islands were about 10 times the size. Evidence of owl pellets show that Titopollens mainly fed on a rodent named the Bahamian Hutia, as the Bahamas taking on their modern form saw a huge reduction in the population of this rodent that may have caused the extinction of this giant bird. Although owls are a lot less diverse than they had been in the past, there were some very strange owls that lived right up until relatively recently. The fossil of a giant bird were found in Cuba, and due to its large size and very large crushing talons, among with similarities in its bones, they were thought to belong to the forest rockets, or the terror birds, a group of giant flightless birds that lived in South America around this time, but were also found on some Caribbean islands. However, under closer inspection it was found to actually be a giant owl, and was named Ornomegalonyx. Ornomegalonyx had much longer and stronger legs than modern owls, and also had a much smaller sternum, which is important because birds have a modified giant sternum that their enormous flight muscles are attached to. These features have led researchers to believe that Ornomegalonyx may have been a flightless bird, or at least was far worse at flying than modern owls, and much more adept on the ground due to their giant legs. The state of their wing muscles suggests they may not have been entirely flightless, but like turkeys were able to fly short distances if they absolutely had to. They would have stood over a metre tall and were the largest species of owl known to have lived. At the time, Cuba possessed a very unique island ecosystem, with many Caribbean rodents and also a few species of ground sloth, but unlike their massive mainland relatives, due to living on a small island, the Cuban sloths had evolved to shrink down in size, with the largest, Megalochnus, being about the same size as a pig. All of these animals would have presented a great food source for any would-be predator, but at the time, Cuba had no large mammalian predators, and so an owl most likely evolved to fill the niche, and due to growing in size and having no threat of larger predators, Ornomegalonyx lost its ability to fly, or at least its flight became less important. And this stands to reason because there was also a flightless species of crane on the island that had a much broader bill than modern cranes. There is evidence that Ornomegalonyx was stalking Cuba right up until as recently as 6,000 years ago, which is around the time when humans arrived on the island. So the owls that evolved to very different lifestyles may have gone extinct, however the night skies are still home to the nocturnal variation of owl, and are one of the most unique birds or unique looking animals to have ever lived. Thanks for watching, a big thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.